evening. This is the uh, planning board meeting of uh, April 25th, uh, 2017. Um, if we could stand to Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And this meeting is being brought to you tonight by Area 58 Community Access Media. Uh, let's see, we have a public hearing. We're going to have to skip that. Um, I don't know. I guess we go to other business. We'll start that. Sure. Although we... Um, planning Board member notes. Mr. Chair, if I could. Um, first thing, uh, I want to congratulate you on your reappointment, re-election to this uh, board. Uh, you've done a great job and glad to have you back. Um, number two, just a point of information. I know it's not on the agenda. Um, we're supposed to reorganize at every meeting, so I, I'd ask for that to be on the agenda at our next meeting. Mm -hmm. um, that's all I got. And as far as uh, anything I have to say, just like to uh, welcome back uh, Jack Hunter, our interim planner, He's oh, yeah. going to be with us for the next uh, th through few more meetings, I guess, after this one. And we're, ha we're happy to see him back. And uh, he's, he's looking as uh, great as ever. <laughs> and, um, and then hopefully uh, we'll, uh, we st we're still going through resumes and, and uh, hopefully we can uh, go on uh, interviewing for uh, our next planner. But we're certainly happy to have Jack uh, fill in for the time that uh, we don't have one uh, with us right now. Kevin, anything? No, um, I guess the only question I have is um, when is the right time for us to bring up signs and right now. Um, is it? Mm -hmm. I, I was a little bit concerned that there was a um, very large sign put up at uh, ground effects, and I just wanted to make sure that they filed the appropriate permits for it. Kevin, what's the what? what? They got a beautiful sign. Where where is it? Ground at, uh, ground effects. They got a beautiful sign that says. Uh, I, I haven't mulch. been here in a while. Yeah. Ground effects is located across from the condos on Main Street. Um, it's where the uh, across from. Um, Cedar Plot, uh, yep. Cedar Hill. Plot. I know we're right there. Used to the old landscaping. Yeah. 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 John, yeah. yeah. I landscaping. will make sure the building commissioner knows, and the way I usually like to do things is to talk to them first instead of enforcement and mm -hmm. get them in here and get sure. them to do what they need to do. They probably didn't know. No, they're doing a great job. It looks beautiful. Yeah, and it looks there. nice. Wanted yeah. to make sure that uh, we're all on the same <coughs> page. Yep. I know they did come before the board when they uh, started the business um, last year. For a sign? Uh, on their initial signs. Sign. This one's like a banner. Mm. Like a big banner. So for, under uh, the bylaw, do you do allow grand opening banner? I'll have to look. Yeah. I'll look. We'll figure it out. Yep. Does the uh, planning <laughs> our interim planning director have any uh, well, notes for us? This I do. Uh, thank you for your nice introduction, Bruce. Um, I am only here to help you guys, and through the transition, I know that the town administrator has gotten several, many resumes, and once that determination has been made, uh, I may stay a little bit longer to help whoever you hire. Um, settle in but you know I only have so much time so uh, I'll do the best I can and it's always it's so nice to see so many good faces and so many people that I really really enjoyed working with so thank you just two things I think I have or three maybe I did talk to Serped as you know you were awarded a um, district local technical assistance grant and this is to do um, the um, a re look at the transfer of development rights and also update the uh, priority development areas and the priority protection areas. I did talk to Grant King um, to 
today. And since I'm only interim, there's no way I can do this or help him. I could help him a little. But he said that you have until December 31st to finish this. Okay. So his recommendation is wait until the new person's on board, and then you can he can start working with that person and, and easily finish this. Um, he also spoke glowingly about the master plan process and how well received it is has been and that a uh, big job on whoever gets the job here will be to start implementing it even though some of the items have started already um, my last thing and maybe we'll need to put this on as a, an agenda item is its member appointment time um, I believe Bruce you're probably still the planning board member yes um, appointee so I don't know if you're going to want this on the agenda. It isn't, or you can do it under other business, but it's up to you guys. We're going to put that on the agenda for... It's up to you. I can do that for May 9th. May 9th, yeah. I'll we'll, be here we'll for do that. that. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Um, I think that's all I have. All right. Thank you. Uh, we can't vote on the minutes uh, until Jim... How about any, do we have any correspondence? Um, just what I just noted. Okay. Yep. And our next meeting date will be? May 9th. May 9th. And I hope you three will be there. Will will be nice and tanned yep. and cranky. <laughs> nope. Well, okay. How about, uh, let's take a look well, we're still waiting for our other member to show up. Uh, we could look at the 23 Center Street approval not required mm -hmm. plan since this is, we're just looking at this tonight and we're not going to. Uh, right, and that's for both Form A's. Um, both Form A's are just um, a receipt. And I know Brian from GAF is here. I. To explain it to you, I had one question of Brian, which hopefully he can discuss with you. So this is on the 11 by 17 sheet. Okay, this this one here. Which you have on the back of the but this, this lot here sort of looks like a lollipop. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you, Brian Grady with GAF Engineering. Uh, yeah, Jack came up to me earlier with a, a question on, on the lot, so as a way of explanation, uh, this property currently exists as two lots. There's the house lot, you see the existing dwelling, which is located on what we have labeled as lot 14, and then there's the agricultural lot, lot 13, which is currently 61A, contains the cranberry bog. Uh, the purpose of this plan is uh, to reconfigure the two lots. It'll still be the house lot and the agricultural lot. Um, but what this does is it gives lot 13 a little bit more upland between the house and the cranberry bog. And it gives the house lot that lollipop or that dog tail that you see to give it access to what's labeled as East Center Mill Road. Now that's a a dirt gravel road which access some cranberry bogs located to the rear of the property. So there's really nothing changing here. There's a house lot and there's an agricultural lot. There will be a house lot and an agricultural lot. It's just uh, changing those two lot lines between them. All right. Uh, so there is no house to be built on lot 13. Not right now. There's none proposed. It, I mean, it could happen in the future. The land is in 61A. All that would need to be addressed prior to it coming out of 61A. Um, so the potential is there, but there's no plans for that at this time. Okay. Any other questions? Not at this time. I think we're all set. Thank you for that explanation. Mr. Chairman. Oh, no, that's Jack. Yep. Yeah. Um, I didn't understand the plan immediately. I thought they were subdividing 
13 off of a combination of 13 and 14. It's a technicality, and I'm going to, you know, the bylaw says today when you create a lot that the lot can no, cannot be any less than 75 feet in width until you reach the front of the house, of the proposed house. And obviously, lot 13 in its former configuration and now, if the house is going all the way in the back there, would not meet the letter of the law. If it went in the front, near lot 14's house, it would meet the letter of the law. Got it. The, the conundrum, I think, if that's the right word, is that this already exists. So he's actually making it more conforming instead of less conforming, in a sense. You know, the only other point I would add to that is that rear piece of land would be within the riverfront area, and any new construction would require an alternatives analysis, and the alternative would put that home in the front, in the front on Center Street. Yeah, and so I think the combination makes me more comfortable with that. But that was my in only concern I had. Good morning, Jim. Any other questions? Do we fall? Uh, clarification didn't uh, a couple of years ago we had a um, odd shaped lot thing not to allow odd shaped lots um, I'll have to look it up I, I, I'll what I'll do is I'll scan that language to you mm. in Carver and I remember drafting this with a former board will was probably on I don't know about Bruce we developed this language to really make these lots be less contorted Ex where the house was going to be. Where else, what else you do, we didn't care. So I, I'll make sure you guys get that language. It's the definition of lot is, is where it falls under. And see if you're comfortable with it. All right. And you're only receiving it, so on the 9th, there'll be considering endorsement. Thank you for your explanation. Okay. See you on the 9th. Thank you. And, uh, so the next is uh, Rambury Road. Yeah, this one, if I may, Mr. Chair, before you deliberate, um, this one is a. I was confused until I talked to the surveyor, but I highlighted one of them. Bruce has it. Where Bruce has got the the triangle highlighted, that part, that piece, is switching from lot one dash eight A, Michael Shaw, to lot three, Sean Bogart. That's all. That's what they're doing. They're swapping land. Not swapping. Mr. The Bogarts are buying land from the Shaws. Mm. That's it. It's a little hard to read, and that's why I highlighted it um, because I couldn't understand it myself. But so that's a. It, it meets all the frontage. It meets the lot size. There are two existing houses. There's nothing else going on here. All right, and then we'll look at this at our next on meeting. On the 9th, yeah. and I talked to the surveyor, and the Bogarts will be here. The surveyor can't make it, but it seems so simple. I didn't see any reason to have the surveyor here. Right. Well, we'll, we'll discuss at next meeting, but what they're doing is they're swapping all yeah, the... They're, they're, they're buying... Main road this is. Um, Cranberry. Cranberry Road. It's right near the um, State Forest, very close. All right, thank you. All right, so now uh, we can start at the top of the agenda and we can go to a continuation of a public public hearing. And it's uh, Route 44 Development LLC 
uh, 20-4 Park Ave off Montello Street. It's assessor's map uh, 20-2, and it's a request for a special permit to allow site preparation activities to address historic environmental is issues and import soils in anticipation of future development in the Green Business Park District per the Carver Zoning Bylaw Sections 4300 and 5300. And this is a continuation from uh, the, the meeting that we had uh, at our last meeting. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah, I'm Bruce Haskell from Langdon Environmental um, uh, here on, the, uh, on behalf of the project proponent. Um, I think I, we went through the, the general outlines of the project before and the, the site during the site walk uh, with the board and uh, the, you know, the, the different category, different issues that are uh, outlined in the document, the special permit application. Um, I think there were a couple of questions that came up, and I'd like to try to uh, try to address those as far as operational questions that came up and, and concerns, and try to have, start a dialogue of how to um, you know sort of put those into potential conditions, or, or um, um, you know, if the board decides to move ahead with this. Um, one was the question came up about the hours of operation, um, and we had had in the initial special permit for the project that the um, soils could stop being delivered at seven o'clock, excuse me, sorry, at five o'clock, and that the operations could continue to seven o'clock. There was some concern about the seven o'clock timing of, of, of that. And what we've talked about initially is an, an idea that those operations, the placing of soils would end a half an hour before dark, okay, um, for sunset out there at, at all times with two caveats to that. They would never go later than seven o'clock. So on June, you know, the late days in June, you're not gonna be able to operate till 7.30 because it doesn't get dark till eight. Um, but it would also never stop earlier than 5 p.m. Um, as a practice, we are you know, not going to be placing material in the dark. I mean, it's just not, it's not a, a reasonable operation. So what we try to do is say, you know, that that's, you know, sort of say, okay, well, we're not gonna ever go past seven o'clock, but like this time of year, I think we're in the margins of where sunset is probably 7.30 or so, so you might be even pushed back you know, from that, but never go past a half an hour before um, sunset out there. So that was a, a proposal that we'll make to you, to, you know, for your consideration out there. Um, there also were some comments uh, from Fussell O'Neill on the stormwater, and, uh, uh, that, and we've responded to those, and we've, there was an email back, which I have a copy of if you'd like me to. They have it. They have it, okay, from, yep. um, from from uh, Fuss and O'Neill about the uh, responses, which I think the questions, if I can just paraphrase the comments, were, you know, these basins aren't designed for the full, you know, the full future long-term development of the site, um, and that we agree with that. Um, they really, you know, just so to highlight this, these basins are designed to retain and hold the 100-year design storm. So that's a storm that has a 1% chance of having happening every year out there. So they will have no <coughs> discharge at that point. So they are really designed at a very conservative way to try to keep all the stormwater on site and not have any mitigation during our operations. Um, we've also added in, um, and we didn't get to see it when we saw it walk to the site, um, we put stone check dams in the, each of the swales, which are very effective at removing silt as it moves down the process out there. And we've also added some discussions, um, there's some information in the responses about never having too much area open. I mean, that's where we start to really have problems if we have you know, 15, 20 acres open at a time that we would sort of do it in small, small pieces and then just break it up into parts and cap and get those um, sort of vegetated and, and stabilized before moving to the next, you know, the next section out there. So we provided some detail to that. Um, out there, and I don't believe Fusnoni had a chance to, to go through detail of it was review of the comments, but I think they generally agree. We have an email that says that he's comfortable with it. Okay, out there. So um, the third thing that came up during the site walk was the need for an earth removal permit um, you know, from the town town earth removal board, and we've talked about it internally, and we will file with that with them um, and you know try to get on their the next available agenda. Um, with the same plans that we're asking for your um, approval of tonight out there. So, okay. that I can answer any other questions you might have. It's up there. Anybody have any questions? Uh, one of the questions, I guess, I guess I'll start is uh, the processing of material. Uh, um, when is that? How, how is that going to continue for as? Uh, 
for the duration of of the work or is that going to be just for a, a short time um, it was the, the grinding of material or processing of material rocks and concrete that you have out there so there's two grinding processing operations that we're going to do one is the, the um, asphalt brick and concrete material you saw some of the existing material that was piled out there now um, under the phase one they had an ability to bring in additional material what that what this operation will be is there'll be enough material accumulated to justify bringing in a crushing operation out there um, and that crushing operation will work for a finite period of time uh, you know out there. it will only operate for a finite period of time and then leave the site this is not I did, we talked about this before this is not a permanent asphalt brick and concrete and none of the materials that are processed are going to leave the site they're all going to be used as part of stabilizing the site and roadways and, and things like that so it's not a commercial operation if you will to, to move remove material from the site um, out there so it'll be for a short you know dura a set duration of time um, that will be out there um, it, the um, other thing material that's going to be processed is, is that large wood pile that's down there that needs to get dug out and, and processed and that will be a probably a one-shot deal that would be something where we could um, and I would offer you know that we could notify the board that that was you know, that was going to happen get in there and take care of that pile and, and get get that out of there um, and get that get uh, get the material out of there and everything else and we have some um, operational ideas of that which basically are taken off the fire department regular you know standards um, out there for how that material is going to be handled as we move through that process um, out there um, the only thing with processing and these kinds of equipment is they do break down a lot um, so again if we want to set a duration for that then I think we want to take a look at you know the ability to you know hey it, it, it was it worked fine for a week it broke down for a week we need to have it there for another you know for another week kind of um, kind of process out there but these again I, I can't imagine um, that these operations will go on I, I can't predict the wood wood one because that's a I, I don't know how much wood is actually there out there but we could take a, a cut at that um, but I think you know the, the processing you know 30 days of time would be more than enough to to process um, you know the, the piles that they would ever accumulate out there so you're just going to process what we saw on site you're not going to bring anything more no they are process. proposing to bring material in yes they are proposing to bring other material from offsite in to add to that pile to accumulate enough to process that okay. out there and that's what's approved in the phase one um, special permit and you figured all this material that has to be processed will be 30 days or it'll no be it may be well this should be clear. yeah no sorry uh, um it, would be, it would maybe multiple times of 30 days it may be you know two or three times over the duration of this project for 30 days to do that out there so mr chair if i could just butt in on that i think it's important that uh, we understand um the time frame of processing um under the original permit that was issued by this board under section 1-3 concurrent site activities it says in here that the um, a couple things I wanted to bring up but the import um, and of uh, on-site processing of asphalt brick and concrete materials and potentially processing them on site brings up this concern that we're having I think that it's important I, and and I know that um, the applicant understands um, that whenever they're going to process I think that we put in our conditions that um, the applicant gives notice to this board the town that within 14 days of that notice they're going to start their processing in a duration not to exceed 30 days um, and if they need to extend it they notify the town that in the example that the applicant gave um, we had a breakdown what have you we need an extra week or so that way it gives us the opportunity to notify the residents of the town the abutting town that hey this process is going to be taking place the processing time of any of the act of grinding is only from seven to five o'clock not to go past five o'clock at night um, I think that's important that we have that in, in in there so that way we can keep better control of when they're going to process how long they're going to process we don't have that phrase of all this activity going on and the town being inundated or when that's going to happen it's a simple notification i think it'll work out fine i think that's a good idea yeah. and that's all right that seems reasonable i mean it, it seems like a reasonable um, approach 
and to, and to piggyback on what Will said, that way there we're clearly defining that it's not part of the extending the hours, you know, until uh, sunset. Right. Right. I, so I understand that the that okay. falls in the seven to five right time frame. So the processing would be a seven to five hard timeline. The other things would be uh, allowed. That's, that's fine. I think uh, one of the other things uh, we talked about was the up upkeep and maintenance of Montello Street. Uh, while this uh, is uh, is going on, and uh, how did we word that? So, yeah. If I could just just I'll just take it right out of, out of the previous um, applicant during phase one. The site owner has received a special permit from the Cava Planning Board to conduct general site preparation, including upgrading the access road to Park Ave and improvements to Montello Street. So I think that's that's a key there. We had talked throughout this process. We had a couple issues from area residents saying, hey, Montello Street, the overgrowth and stuff. It's very unclear, and I think this board should better define the upgrades of Montello Street and maintaining that under the supervision of our DPW superintendent. And I think uh, Mr. Hunter had a good phrase for us on how we can put that as into our conditions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, it, yeah, I did talk to John Wood, and he was. And I was here when you approved the phase one, so I'll take responsibility. We approved. You approved rather that Montello Street and the access to park had to be upgraded to the specifications of the DPW superintendent. But you never said that it had to be maintained. So I think what Will is saying is that um, not only do you have to upgrade it, but you have to maintain it. So I had language that Montello Street and the entranceway of Park Street shall be properly maintained at the direction of the DPW superintendent. And that way, the duration of the project, that road and the entranceway are properly maintained. Anytime John Wood has a, an issue with it or any you know, um, succeeding DPW superintendent, they have the mechanism to get them to fix it. Because John didn't know what to do. And, and luckily, before you had the site visit, I had talked to Bruce, and they already fixed it, the issue, before we even got out there, so. Yeah, I, th I think our understanding was always that we were responsible to maintain. But it wasn't written. Uh, yeah, no, I understand. I, I, I think we did do some things during the previous year, but that's yeah. that's why I don't think this is that's a, that's yeah. an issue at all. But I do that. I do think it's fair to note that they have done that. Yeah. They yes. have yes. taken the responsibility for seeing to it that yep. it was done, especially upon our last site yep. visit. So I have I have one other thing while we're talking about Montello Street, um, the concern of the culvert. We're going to be bringing in a substantial amount of um, more material, so that's more more roadway, more more traffic, heavy equipment going over that traffic. The covets, yeah. So I think that we have to. What happens? And this is just really a question. What happens if the covet becomes unsafe? What do we have in in pro place to take care of that? Because obviously. Nobody wants to go down the Plimpton side of Montello Street. I can help. I recall at the first phase, before it got to your final decision, uh, Fuss and O'Neill and Bruce's team inspected that culvert, and it was okay. Right. So that's why it was never written in. I know where Will's going with this, so maybe some language. There's there's actually language in the permit that requires we've been doing quarterly uh, inspections oh, yes. of the culvert by VHB, who did the original um, sort of assessment of it, has mm -hmm. gone back um, either two or three times to do an inspection of it to try to identify if there's something that looks like it's changing out there. Um, and I think that's, you know, the idea is to get ahead of it if there's something that's changed or, or some, some kind of issue with the the trucks going over over the culvert and if need be make some form of repair with, with appropriate repair out okay. there so, so I don't we're I talking don't. quarterly inspections of culvert on Montello by applicants engineer and reports submitted to the planning board right. I'm, I 
think that that was I, I could try I to find it. I didn't see it in here. Um, I didn't we've been it. doing that. I but remember I, talking about it back then. Um, we've been doing that, but I don't remember if it's ever made its way. I don't. Well, it'll be in there now. It was a re it was a recommendation, I think, of VHB when they did the initial assessment as part of the original process. And Fuss and O'Neill, I think it was a recommendation that there be ongoing evaluations of it, and Fuss and O'Neill sort of made that as a recommendation to the board. Well, we never put it in, but I wrote it down. Oh, it's, no, it's number condition 19, actually. Oh, it, oh yeah. you know what? Mine dropped off at 18. I take that back. I think it's important that um, that we that we um, oh here it is that yeah. we have something that what happens if we have have a situation. Um, are we ceasing? I, I want to make sure that we're not going to ever take material down the Plimpton side of I, I Montello. Mean, I, 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 will, I, mean, I probably speak. I mean, we, we don't have any intention of taking the material out that out that way. If, the, if that culvert failed for some yep. reason or was un, um, unpassable out there, we would have to shut down until that was that until was, it was repaired. Repaired. Yeah, I mean that's not. I mean, I, th I think given we've we've always de designated that one truck route out there, so yep. I think it's it's in our interest to make sure that, that culvert stays okay um, operational. Thank you, Mr. Chair. There was one other uh, thing that I was concerned about was uh, the money for uh, periodic inspections. I can help with that, um, and this is to Bruce. I haven't had a chance to talk to the Bruce about this, but in, in your previous decision, number 17 and 18, remember when you initially approved phase one, it was a two-year project. What's coming in front of you now is a four-year project, maybe more, with, what, seven times much, maybe eight times more Mm -hmm. load if you will mm -hmm. and number 17 says the operation shall be subject to unannounced site inspections by the town's LSP these inspections will not exceed one inspection per month on an average over a six month period and that the applicant will be responsible for all costs accrued for these services not to exceed 4500 so I think the question of the chair is that 4500 isn't realistic for the length and magnitude of your proposal. I was going to recommend not to exceed 20000 Number 18 is applicants shall be subject to review of all soil packages by the town's licensed site professional at the expense of the applicant not to exceed 1500 and I was going to recommend 10000 uh, just the frequency won't change, but the amount will change only because of the nature and the length and duration of this project. This is, yes, I mean, I, I, yes, the number seem, does seem fair. I mean, it's, I, this is a much longer duration project than was anticipated right. for the first phase, and he's had to do some <coughs> additional. I mean, he has joined me just for the board's information on almost all but maybe one inspection or two inspections that we've done of the nine or ten that we've done since they started operating out there was there anything else um i had a couple questions uh, bruce in the scheme of things i know conservation commission is going to play a role in this mm -hmm. when in the scheme of this do you think you'll be submitting to them we're gonna probably, I'm going to probably talk to them tomorrow and try to start to submit, start, start the process of submitting and you know forget on the, whatever their schedule is for submissions and you know filing and everything else for the next available meeting. Oh, okay. Events, so like that. we have a document that's sort of drafted and um, and pretty much ready to go. We may have to make some um, clarifications to the stormwater. Yep. And, <clears throat> and my only other comment, and I know I said this at the site visit, is to the public, is that I did talk to Joe Salvetti. He's your licensed site professional. And um, he told me that this is the best run project he's ever seen in his 35 years of doing what he does. And that um, we should be very happy with where we're at right now. And he sees no reason that should change. But we still have the un 
un um, unannounced inspections in the soil packages to protect the town to what goes in there. So. Any other questions or comments by the board? No, I, I think the question was um, um, that I'm going to recommend a language. Uh, language about earth removal, and I'm going to recommend that you have a condition that prior to the commencement of operations for phase two, that the applicant seeks a permit from the earth removal committee under the mediation uh, clause, a uh, remediation clause. And essentially, this was an earth removal site, and any earth removal site has remediation that that is continuous while they're earth, they're doing earth removal. This one, unfortunately, remains stagnant, but we're going to catch up now with the remediation. So I had some language like that I, we would put in, and I have talked to the chair of the earth removal committee and and with the applicant and they were both comfortable with that language anything else by board I, got, members? I got one thing and um it's more of a clarification when we were out at the site visit thank you for taking us out there and i agree the site looks a thousand percent better than it did before we started this process um you had, you had told me that there was different uh, test wells that you guys had installed to monitor out there, just smaller well sites that are 15 or 20 feet deep? Yes, the, the, so we they're, they're, the wells that were out there historically to monitor <coughs> off-site contamination yep. are very deep, in, are, you know, deep much, much deeper yep. into the aquifer. That's where the contamination is. We had to install by DEP's requirements for this project. Um, a, there's six shallow groundwater wells that are out there. They're sampled on an annual basis under our consent order with DEP for the site um, for a laundry list of parameters out there. Um, the reports from that data, there was, the initial round was done before we started, right around the time we started. Um, that, that data was sent to, to the planning board um, out there. And then they'll be sampled again in, I think it's either July or August of this year. I did read in the report um, that the sampling was taking place and it also stated that in the report that it would be two years after the completion of the site there'd still be sampling done? Yes, that's correct. So we, when, we, when the site is finished taking soils, yep. there's a, it stopped, the sampling stops and then there's a two year afterwards, um, it, it sort of, it's getting to see if something comes up at that, at that juncture um, out there. So that's the, that would be the final round, presuming there's nothing found. Do you expect with this second permit and the amount of um, material that you're bringing in that DEP is going to require you to put in uh, more monitoring wells? Uh, no. No, okay. I do not. No, it's because they, uh, the, the wells are located to, to pick up both up gradient and down gradient, um, you know, mm -hmm. to, um, groundwater at the site out there, and they do a good job of doing that. They're within the limits. They're outside of the limits of where we um, anticipate to go for phase two, so they will they will monitor phase two. Okay. Accurately. I think that uh, the reason why I brought that up is not only what is it in the report, but I thought it was um, it was an important factor that was brought up during the site visit, and I think it's good that the um, the public realizes that there are different agencies that require different things other than this board and this town, and I thought that where there was um, water quality. Uh, uh, remediation from the federal government that's been ongoing for neons there that this was implemented because of this project mm -hmm. and that it's ongoing so I think that's important for the public to understand that thank you if anybody uh, anybody else has any comments if not this is a public meeting and um, I'll just uh, see if anybody out in the audience would like to speak about this Seeing no one come forward, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Make a motion to close the public hearing for Rule 44, Phase 2. I'll second that. So we have a mo uh, motion and a second. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. So it's unanimous. <coughs> uh, so 
uh, the uh, everything will be drafted up for us for our next meeting. Yeah, but I'd like some consensus, if you don't mind, Mr. Chair. I, you know, we have our. I went through last permit, and there's the eleven standard conditions. Then we have the condition about processing prior. Let me help. APC processing, well, let me see if I get it right. APC processing shall be limited to 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday and shall adhere to MassDEP's noise policy as well as to the Town of Carver's zoning bylaws section 3600 regarding noise. Materials may be moved, ma materials previously on site may be moved until 7 p.m. or half hour for before dusk, whichever happens less. Is that about right? Uh, those are two separate conditions, right? I mean, it's one that's related to the processing, the other one's related to all the other operations. Operations. Right? It's, it's right. 5 o'clock, the processing ends. Right. Um, I guess the way I, I, I again, maybe this, I, I'm hoping there's not a hole in this, uh, this, this is that operations always will, operations will never be later than 7 o'clock, but never can, it can be allowed, always allowed till 5 o'clock. But in the interim time, it always has to end a half an hour before dark. And we'll put that into some English that the world can understand. That's, uh, that's a concept. Of, I, it's not well. Instead of me yeah. fumbling, I know the concept. Yeah, I, I think the the important part about this whole this whole end is that um, the truck the trucks coming in will probably s will stop by five. Yes. Whatever's on site to be moved around is okay but the processing of the asphalt and the big grinding and stuff will cease at five, at five o'clock right this is the other op this is soil right. that comes in gets placed and gets right. has to get pushed around after five that it, that that helps on numerous things number one the truck traffic will stop coming up and down montella street after five o'clock and night when when the majority of the people are home from work and that noise factor of the processing will stop at five but as as far as the um the moving of soils around on the site that are already there up to seven o'clock will be helpful. Been, there's one caveat that we have in the permit. I just want to be clear with the board about if there's a hurricane coming yeah. in. Okay, there's there's sort of a, a well, need. To, there's a need to stay. But I just want to be clear that there there could be a, a very unusual, you know, once every two year kind of condition. Hopefully, that comes in that we may need to do some uh, out of hour work out there. But that will be very infrequent. Um, the next condition will be that uh, um, about tracking soil onto Park and Montello during rainy days and that a water truck with pressure washer will be available on site. Um, there's a, a these are all conditions that were in phase one. Uh, operations creating unanticipated odors on site will be mitigated. Um, a designated truck route and no times will trucks be allowed to exit left onto Montello going north. Um, we also, ha you also had a condition about a $50,000 surety and that, that should continue. Then we're into the unannounced inspections and we're going to raise that to $20,000 and then we're into the soil packages and we're raising that to $10,000. Um, we um, we're going to continue having the Montello Street culvert inspected by the applicant's engineer every three months and with a report submitted to the planning board and DPW superintendent. Trucks will be limited Monday through Friday, not on holidays. Um, we're going to have language that Montello Street and Park Street entrance shall be properly maintained at the direction of the DPW superintendent. Um, proper security for the site shall be installed. And I failed to mention this earlier, and I like this one, is that um, six months after the commencement of operations, the applicant shall meet with the director of planning to discuss progress and any violations. And there's more. Uh, 
condition that the app prior to the commencement of phase two commission the applicant shall go to the earth removal committee under the remediation clause for a permit and that prior to any APC processing particularly grinding the applicant shall give 14 days notice to the planning board and it will not exceed 30 days any extension will be no uh, the planning board will be notified that's what I got okay. boy I'm revisiting all this welcome back <sighs> couldn't you do an easier one no right back in my that's what I have for conditions and I think that that will protect the town, the residents, and still get the applicant and where they need to go to develop the site. Anything else? I'll entertain a motion to close the... No, oh, it closed it already. That's it. Oh, that's okay. That's it. So we're good. So, okay, well, so we'll have the conditions to sign. Are you going to vote on it tonight? No, I need all the. Okay, so you're going to vote on it on the ninth. Okay. Everybody. Well, that's what I was. Yeah. That's okay. fine. The, yeah. Okay, so we'll we'll uh, review the. I'll email them to you, and then we'll. I'll make sure the it. applicant has the conditions. We'll work it all out. Get it to you for the ninth. And then we'll vote for the ninth, the Jim. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Gary. Good job. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, the next on the agenda and the last is uh, we have a discussion tonight. Uh, Davenport Companies, Russell Nesbitt, um, a clarification on lots and roads in Whistleberry Glen, um, which is a conservation subdivision off of High Street. Mr. Chairman, at this time I'm going to step out and excuse myself uh, as um, I have uh, business relationships with the Davenport Company. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Russell Nesbitt. I've been with the company for a while. I, uh, you probably, uh, I don't know if you remember, all of you were on the board at the time, but uh, Eddie Makepeace first came into you uh, for a conservation subdivision off of High Street, and uh, we named it Whistleberry Glen. Uh, there has been no construction there at all. Uh, it was uh, permitted sometime prior to December of 2007. And uh, at the time, there was a moratorium by the town of Carver on building permits. Uh, but I believe that has since gone by, and uh, now that is not the case. Um, primarily, I have some questions, really, to, to the board to try to find out where the board stands on some things. And uh, if Davenport were to uh, comply with zoning, number one, comply with the town of Cabo. Uh, are, is Davenport able to build 14 houses all at one time? And that's a question that you, you know, we'd have to have answered. Uh, but we don't have to have it answered now. It's primarily in, within the subdivision. Um, the roads are roughed in. Uh, they've been uh, topped with the base coat and the infiltration basin is in, the cul-de-sacs are in, uh, everything I think is, is done to specs uh, according to the way where I understand it uh, and I hope the planning board is happy with what has gone on there. Um, as I said, we have not built any houses yet uh, there. Um, there is an A and R lot that uh, is on High Street, further down toward the Kingston line, 
that uh, it's our understanding that as long as we comply with zoning, as long as uh, the covenants are met, that we could draw a building permit on that lot and begin building as long as we're able to uh, convince the, the town of Carver and the building commissioner that the house that we're building is, is adequate and, and, and comfy. Um, the next question I have is if Davenport were to build other than single family homes, is that a possibility within the town of Carver? I've tried to read the building codes and I've tried to speak to the former uh, planner and she really couldn't answer it. She just told me to get in touch with the building inspector, but the building inspector wasn't available at the time, uh, building commissioner. Um, so I, I just, uh, I'm proposing these questions to try to get a, a feeling of how the, the board would feel if, if we were to do something like this. Uh, unfortunately, in 2007, as you probably remember, uh, the lots were purchased at the height of the market. Mm -hmm. And since then, uh, the market still hasn't recovered to the point where uh, the lots are viable and some of them in the front are quite narrow. But it's possible that, uh, that we could build depending on how we place the home. Um, another question that, that we have is uh, once the entrance and the roads are final coat paid, uh, is the project complete? And I don't believe there's been any uh, soil erosion there or any silt or anything get into the infiltration basin or uh, it was designed by A.D. Makepeace, as you probably remember if you were on the board at the time, um, so that the cul-de-sacs do absorb water as well as the infiltration basin. And the, uh, there is a catch basin down below in the infiltration basin that takes the water toward the infiltration. There is not a park there. Um, there is a gate at the entrance and the gate has been maintained so that uh, people uh, and we've tried to keep the, the rubbish picked up around there so it doesn't create an eyesore. Um, Davenport also has had some interest from buyers uh, wanting to purchase the property uh, but we have been reluctant because number one they haven't met the price that we pay for the lots and number two we didn't know how the planning board felt uh, and there was a, a phasing uh, built into the conservation subdivision initially as to how many permits could be drawn at one time. So I, I just wanted to ask that and if, you know, if we were to redesign and permit the area as a conservation subdivision, would this be at all possible or is, are we locked into what has been designed and what has been built as far as the roads are concerned. So how many lots do you have now? I, I, there's 14 have, lots. There's 14 lots? 14 lots in the and initial Whistleberry Glen. The A&R and lot, A and R lot that is further down High Street uh, near the Kingston line is the 15th lot. And uh, it, it, it's not currently a conservation subdivision. Yes. Oh, it, it is, is a conservation subdivision. currently a okay. conservation subdivision. Oh, okay. And it was permitted prior to, we took title in December of 2007, 10 years ago. <laughs> and, and I was I was here. And, and, and nothing's been built there. In Nothing there. has been built, no. All right. I can help, Mr. Chair, if you. Don't yeah. Want. What do you? What are your thoughts well, on? Well, I can tell you a little background for Jim and and, and Kevin. Um, this was a conservation subdivision um, that I we permitted through the planning board. At the time, there was a moratorium on the amount of building permits that we could allow per year, and I think it was seven, if I remember. Yes. 
Um, so, and there's some language, I don't have that permit in front of me, there's some language that spells that out. That moratorium has expired many, many, many years ago. But the special permit condition still exists. So, even though the moratorium has expired, there's some, I don't know how much wiggle room there is because of the condition on the special permit. Getting back to your last question, if you chose to redesign the, the subdivision as a conservation subdivision, then that would, we could, the board could get rid of that staging or phasing component because the moratorium doesn't exist anymore. Um, the Form A was part of the whole shtick, but it has nothing to do with the subdivision. And in my opinion, as long as you meet the setbacks and wetlands and all that stuff, you can get a building permit anytime you want. The Form A <laughs> is part and parcel. It's, it's completely separate from the subdivision, though under the same ownership. Um, We've run into this before about um, completing the road. As you know, we yeah, ran into it Hollow. about Kingsbury Hollow. Uh, uh, we also own Kingsbury Hollow, for those of you that don't know. Uh, Davenport uh, has purchased Kingsbury Hollow, and we're down to five lots left, I believe, at Kingsbury Hollow. Oh, great. So there's a, the original 21, there's 16. Uh, that have been uh, purchased and homes built and uh, I assume the people are happy. There's a homeowners association there, there's a park. Uh, that, that's a whole separate issue and at the time that we have put up a cash surety uh, with the town to finish the road, which we intend to do, but uh, we needed to reach an 80% figure at the present at the time and we're one lot short uh -huh. and that whole issue came up and this is it's relevant to this because there's this whole once just and this is every subdivision in the, at least the commonwealth who knows anywhere else is when you start selling lots on this road that's not finished the homeowners are going to start saying well i want my road finished and then the owner, Davenport, comes to the planning board and says, well, we want the road accepted. And then John Wood, the DPW superintendent, and says, hey, wait a minute, I don't want you accepting this road until more of the houses are sold because otherwise they're going to dig up the road and everything and I'm going to have to fix it because I own it now. So it's a bit of a catch-22 there. And I would think language like we did at Kingsbury would be applicable to this if and when you got to there. But I think the most curious question, and this is really to the board, not to me, is what other options are you thinking of? I know I had a discussion with you about duplexes on there. and I mean... Uh, I'm trying to come up with something that the lots of Whistleberry will work. We've paid roughly 145000 for each lot. And as you probably know, 145000 is a lot of money. But in 2007, it wasn't a lot of money. Today, it's still a lot of money. Uh, and we're trying to make sense of Whistleberry although nothing has been built there as yet. Uh, some people have inquired as to having a house built there and we've said no, you really need to concentrate on Kingsbury Hollow and we've been doing that. But we're getting down in lots at Kingsbury Hollow now. So we're trying to look at Whistleberry as to what can be done there. So this is more of an informational meeting rather than asking for a vote. But I just wanted to get the board's consensus as to what they would like to see there. If we were to move forward, if we were to sell it, if we were to re-permit it, what, what kind of 
input could you give me? I actually have to see the plans. I'm a little confused because you say you have a conservation subdivision there. I, you know, I'm not familiar. I don't know if I've ever seen the plans for this. Oh, you uh, might not. It might have been before you, Bruce. I think it was before yeah. me. Yeah, I, I happen to have a set of plans. It, it's a nice subdivision, and, and there's a nice piece of property that the Conservation Commission took over or will take over. It was a nice project. It's just the economy went when right. the project went. So you already have a conservation subdivision there? Yes. That's, okay. <laughs> okay. And but, okay, so you're thinking of maybe, and how much of the road is completed there? All the road is completed, rough coat. Yep. So all okay. the drainage has been put in, all the hydrants have been put in, everything is done. Fully inspected by FNO, uh, Foss and O'Neill, it's ready to go, but no top coat. And I don't know what's happened in 10 Nothing. years. Nothing. Well, <laughs> that's easy for us to say, but I would want Fuss and O'Neill to eventually yeah. tell us that. Yeah. Um, so you can't change the configuration of the road because it's it already exists. That's right. The road exists, yes. He could ask you to amend the special permit to get rid of the moratorium. He could do that. That was a special permit that was on the subdivision. The conservation subdivision is a two-tier process. The first process is you give them a special permit that allows them to go to the reduced lots, the reduced frontage, the open space. Once they pass that hurdle, then they go to the definitive subdivision phase. Mm -hmm. In the conservation subdivision special permit, there was the condition about phasing because we were all worried about too many houses being built at once. I don't think, there is no moratorium anymore, so you would be hard pressed to have that today, but it does exist, it's, it's on there. There's nothing other than, <coughs> excuse me, reopening the hearing, you couldn't get rid of it. So we'd have to reopen. But I see no need that we have to have that right now. Uh, it, I think it's up to the applicant. Yeah. It's okay, yeah, we'll take a look. This, this is the plan of Whistleberry Glen now. This is the infiltration basin here. And these are lots. And there is a, a lot down here that's an A&R lot. Mm -hmm. Get a flu over there. So what would you like These to do? Yeah. Are in. Yeah. Primarily what I'm trying to do is just get a feeling of the board of what the board would like. Is it possible that we were to do duplexes here, if we were to do duplexes here? Uh, is this something that the board would be interested in seeing happen? Or <coughs> there would be two bedroom duplexes. No more. No more than two bedrooms. A duplex would, they, would take a special permit from the planning Would they fit on the lots uh, as far as uh, setback requirements? No, we would have to comply with zoning mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Right. So you're just asking us if, if we would think about duplexes. Is, that, is, yeah, it, I, is this something that would be palatable for the planning board or not? Well, I know. Kind of, yeah. You know, kind of a feeling before we start spending a lot of money to right. redo things or entertain an offer or whatever we're going to do. We did do uh, duplexes off of uh, South Meadow. Uh, yes. Duplexes right here in the center of town. Yeah. Right off uh, behind the uh, Bayfront Drive. Yeah. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. That are being built now. Okay, that was since May, but I remember the ones on South Meadow. Yeah. So would you do all duplexes? So you have 14 <coughs> well, you have lots. Three right? Three cul-de-sacs now. This is the main entrance here. Uh, we have since purchased the property here and here. Uh, that's part of the uh, the conservation area. I think one consideration would be: Is it going to be condos or rental? I, I'm just asking. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, but these guys, you know, you're. It's a policy decision. Mm -hmm. Well, the, I, yeah, I'm not really asking for a decision. I'm just trying to see get the feeling yeah. before we start spending a lot of money to design and come before the board and, and formally, as formally. I think, I don't think I'd have a 
objections about uh, condos. Would it be? Uh, I, I don't know how anybody else feels. Oh, do you want? Would you have condos uh, mixed with uh, single-family homes? Or I, I, uh, yeah, you're just I'm asking. Just asking. I don't know. I, I, with a lot cost of 145,000 in 2007, it's been 10 years later. By the time we add on anything for taxes or it, it puts the single family out of practical use. So in a perfect world that you could, you'd rather have duplexes? Well, duplexes would make it more palatable to be able to sell them or rent them and be able to at least recoup some of the money that it can spend rather than and as single family houses, obviously it would have to get a lot of cost of somewhere around 175 to 200,000, which, and once we build a house, it isn't a flop. People just aren't going to pay that. I think my concern with, with you know, the rental would be, you know, the assurity of finishing the road. Um, Probably would have I don't know if that's caused to, you know, to finish the road, but. I would almost think that an engineer or a lawyer would have to be able to uh, advise us as, as far as whether they could you know, go forward. Maybe a condominium, uh, one or two condominiums, I mean, in each cul-de-sac. Yeah, no matter what they do out there, they would have to meet all the zoning requirements, all the setback, all the no, septic and well and, and, and all those requirements that, that that have to be met. But I think the the, the question is, is, is uh, instead of single families, uh, whether we would want uh, duplexes out there. I, th I know that, you know, north of town we have the duplexes, and I was just... I had had some work that I had to do there, and, th and they came out really nice. Uh, there's a there's a group of them. I don't know how many do we have. Uh, like, uh, I'm not. F are you talking the ones on the North Carver Green? Uh, where, where, I don't know where these are brand new. There's also these the uh, meadow um, duplexes right here. I know them. Yeah, um, yeah those right are the new the ones. End yeah, of, um, the post office. Right. Store. But we have existing duplexes. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know. Okay. That if you, yeah, go down 58, take a left, go into the high school. and They're right on the right. I remember the, I, I was the here for that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're right there. You know, I think Kevin is bringing up an issue, or not an issue, a concern or something to think about is if you're going to build all duplexes, you now have twice as many families. Mm -hmm. And is there a traffic concern? I don't know if there is. I can't remember 10 years ago if we had one back then. I, I, I honestly, I do remember there is a bend in that road and sight distance was addressed. Um, I, you know, this is, I can't help much more than that. I have my own opinions, but it's your board and so how, uh, if you were going to do single family homes there, you were talking about maybe rearranging the lots? Oh, as it stands now, as I said, it just, it doesn't fly to mm. try to fight the land cost at 175 to 200,000. It just doesn't work with trying to build a house on it and being able to sell it. So I'm trying to come up with ways that it can be palatable, but yet workable. Now, this being a conservation subdivision, is there an affordable? Was there an affordable? It was before. Was before the, it was the before it, which then brings up a whole other issue that if you've redesigned the subdivision, 
then you would trigger the affordable housing not the conditions I think you could ask for relief from the conditions for the moratorium well, not being a lawyer or an engineer is there a possibility of maybe possibly allowing again I don't know it would fly putting a condominium a two family condominium per each subdivision uh, subdivision as far as maybe considering that for the affordable housing like a hybrid and how is that going to work with the neighboring houses you know are they going to want a condominium with uh, affordable housing well that's, that's a good point I, I you're saying one per cul-de-sac right. so maybe a hybrid right but then that may lower your sale price for the single family. So are you really gaining anything? I don't know. I would have to be absolutely comfortable with with, with an engineer telling me that um, putting 30 people in 14, 15 uh, <coughs> homes is going to be doable. Uh, you know, uh, subject to five inspections for you know, um, septics and, and water. So the first thing we need to do is amend the special permit, come in and ask for the first special permit uh, for the phasing to be done. Correct. That will take a public hearing. If that, you know, that might be an easy first, or maybe it's not, I think it would be an easy first step. The other issues, though, is marketing and neighborhood issues, traffic, maybe. I, I don't know. Of course, there was the concern about, so if we, if you do duplexes, you're going to double the, the, the units here. So there were concerns. Uh, in some neighborhoods about the nitrogen loading in areas yeah so that would that would make a so that that would be a concern I guess uh, I remember when we did the ones on South Meadow because they're condexes condos yeah each two family is their own condex they had to have a lot of legal requirements about driveways and septics had to be shared and the wells had to be shared. But the nitrogen loading is a very good question. You'd have to ask the Board of Health to, to look into that. So I guess we still like to see the single family homes there, I guess. Anything else? So, what other ways could could we help uh, by a hybrid? Maybe get him a little of what he wants. I would, I would think the town would be more susceptible to condos than to rental. Mm. I, it's hard. I, I, you know, you're going to open it up to the neighborhood. You'll certainly hear what they have to say. Um, I can't remember exactly what the issues were. It was 10 years ago. And even though I'm sharp as a tack, I don't remember everything. I do remember something to do with the bend in the road there and that we had to do a little bit of engineering to it. The, the bend is pretty tight. It's up here. No, oh, no, oh, this the bend here. The road. And it, we had to move this entrance way. So it's right. probably okay now. I don't know. I wish I could. You know, it's a it's a lot of some considerations to be made. So what would happen? So we'd have to open this up. This would be another public meeting then, if you were to do uh, instead of single family homes to to do uh, condos. I'm sorry. What's that? If, if if there were to be condos placed on the property, whether on all the lots or on on a few of the lots um, that, that would have to 
be open to another public meeting and that's a special permit yeah. absolutely yep so that would open up to the neighbors and the, and the oh, people yeah. on the street I mean another thing you could do is you could have a workshop with the neighborhood and plead your case um, with, with or without the planning board um, I know you don't want to spend any money, but I don't know. Well, I don't want to spend any more than we've already spent. Right, right, right. I don't know. Do anybody have any I, I suggestions? Said what I, thought. Yeah. I mean, it, it, I think if it was possible mm -hmm. to maybe consider uh, a hybrid mm -hmm. condo per each subdivision. For each, um, for each uh, cul de sac. Cul de sac. Yeah. Then, um, that would help offset a little bit. But then again, Mr. Hunter said you're going to have to market that and you're going to have to find out whether people are going to want to come in there. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I don't see it flying with all, mm -hmm. uh, I, unless, of course, an engineer can assure us that we're not going to run into uh, a problem with the septic and the runoff and the wells because we're now doubling. So what were these uh, houses originally for? Were they for four bedrooms or uh, three well, bedrooms? Well, originally, when we purchased the property, uh, there was a set of covenants that were given with the property where there would be at least 2,100 square feet and a two-car garage. But if we were to build 2,100 square feet with a two-car garage, with a lot cost of 175 to 200,000, nobody could afford it. Mm. Nobody would pay. So, no, but what I was getting at is, is uh, uh, the septic size is determined by the amount of bedrooms that you have. They were four bedroom houses. So they were four bedroom houses. So if you built duplexes uh, and you had two bedrooms, it would be the same as building one of the houses that was originally proposed with yeah. four bedrooms in right. theory yeah. in theory but yeah you're right so that's less of an impact on nitrogen loading mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. i'd be glad to talk to you about how to proceed with the <laughs> right. to amend the uh, special permit to get hopefully get rid of the moratorium that we would do. That was a long time ago. Yes, it was. The market was pretty hot back then. Yeah. They were giving houses. It giving loans would. away, rather. <laughs> now, do you think the market's ever going to come back with that? Oh, I think that, you know, eventually it might, but uh, at least uh, from the experience we've had at Kingsbury Hollow, uh, there is an objection when you get over 600000 and you know with the cost of construction today trying to build a house with a two car garage and 2100 square feet minimum uh, you have to be over 600,000 with a lot cost of 175 to 1,000 it's just it's a matter of math so what would the condos uh, be priced out at do you have any I, rough I, idea I'm just you know doing an exploratory to trying to find out what what might be permissible if we were to go ahead and spend some money to do something. Well, I, I guess if you did the condos here, I mean, you'd still have to go through the special permits and the, and the public yeah, hearings yeah. and everything. Um, it, w it wouldn't be increasing the septic, you know, because if you were going from a four bedroom house to two duplexes with two bedrooms, then you'd have probably a four bedroom house. So, uh, I don't even know that we will do this. I'm just yeah. trying to get an opinion of the board and trying to get a feeling of what would be possible. And we obviously want to have a neighborhood meeting and get the kind of neighbors right. comfortable with what we're doing. Right. I mean, as long as they work upscale, and I think it, it, it would it would be better to do, um, uh, if you were going to go to the condo way to 
uh, you know, to have condos but not rentals. You know, I I would think that. Well, that the the only reason I even mentioned rentals is that it would be a fallback position that uh, while we're able to sell some of the condos, it would be tough to sell all condos at once. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there would be a, a period of time that there might be some rentals. Might I, I don't know. As long as the property was maintained. Oh yes. Yeah. yeah it would have to be maintained. Yeah. Because that's the thing sometimes with the rentals, the properties. Does Davenport own rentals? Yes. Oh, you do. Over five hundred. Oh. We have quite a few. Of them. I guess so. <laughs> Between apartments and individual houses and condos and oh. so forth. So you're in the business. So we were solidly in the business. We have a maintenance staff that manage the properties. And well, actually, you know, that's a good area, too, because it's by the Spring Street access to yeah. Route 44. Yeah. And then maybe someday that Spring Street access, it's, uh, it's going to be, uh, is that a green business? Pack or what are we yep, going to do? It is. I, I yeah. haven't been around lately. I don't know what's going already. on there. Park innovation. Yeah. Uh, so that's going to be a, a busy area yeah. with businesses and possibly restaurants and, and different things there too. So I don't know if you're aware of that or not. I wasn't, but mm -hmm. I, told me. I know that uh, Cisco is across the street on yes. the other side of 44. Right. Well, I guess I've said. I mean, what I'm not. I'm not in marketing, but I would imagine that a 600 to 650 thousand dollar home would move a lot better than a 350 thousand dollar two bedroom condominium. Uh, I guess that it, that's where I'm it's going. It, it, thinking. You reach you reach a saturation when you when you reach that 600 thousand range. It's psychological. I don't know what it is, but uh, people in Duxbury can't wait to pay 600 thousand. Right. People in Calvert. Just don't want to pay six hundred thousand. Right, right. It's close to Dutch. <laughs> I know. It's getting there. It is. <laughs> we've uh, we've experienced that at Kingsway Hall, where we've had uh, some objection to to the higher price houses. Yeah. Yeah. But fortunately, we've been able to plot along, and we've been able to to move them probably down to five lots left. I think we've given you all the advice well, that I, we can. No, it helps. Yeah, okay, well. It helps. You have my cell phone number. Give me a call. We'll yes, I chat some more. Yeah, I will. Thank you very much. Okay, okay, thank you. All right, Will can come back. Is he roaming the hall? Hey, no. Nobody's here. No? <laughs> Oh, okay. So the last thing we have uh, is the minutes of March 28th, 2017, and the minutes of April 3rd, 2017. So if we could start the pool for the minutes of uh, March 28th. Motion in the second. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. And uh, April 3rd, 2017. Mr. Chair, is one of those sets of minutes executive session? The, well, I was just going to ask you that. It's, it's not included. It's not on March 28th. It's not on April 3rd. But in our packet, we had the executive session 
minutes of Tuesday, July 26th. Uh, uh, I don't know why they're here. It was confusing on the agenda. Um, you probably need to table that until it's on the agenda. Okay. And then um, I, haven't, I haven't looked at it. We got to make a determination whether you want to release them or not. They're two separate things. You approve the minutes, okay. but if the issue is over, they can be released, and then the public can see them. I, I don't even know what the issue is. I didn't read them. But that's a determination you make, not anyone else. So, so to release these minutes to the public? Uh, yeah, I don't... Again, it's an executive session, so you got to read them privately and, and determine that, I, okay. I, whether that issue is over with. Still okay. ongoing. It very well might be. It's been almost a year. Make a motion to approve the minutes by April 3rd as written. Second now. You have a motion to second. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. And so our next meeting will be May 9th. And uh, entertain a motion for adjournment. Motion adjourn. to adjourn. Second now. A motion to second. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you and good night. Bye.